I'm Mark Seifter. And I'm Linda Zayas Palmer. And this is Arcade Mark. Welcome everyone to Build a Settlement Workshop. And thanks for continuing the sub, Ular. Uh, today we are going to be working together to build a settlement based on your ideas and votes. We are also going to be using the Game Mastery Guide for this. So if you have a That's Game Mastery right. Guide, the settlement session starts on page uh, 132. 132. Uh, Zetha says, Ed Greenwood was doing a really nice job of explaining how he built the Forgotten Realms over on EN World. Awesome. That's cool. So. That's how, that certainly sounds like something to check out. When it comes to building a settlement, much like other uh, things that we build, we need to sort of start off with a concept for the settlement. Mm-hmm. And settlement concepts can be a variety of things. They can be based on the settlement's power structure with its government and legal codes and organizations. It can be based on the settlement's sort of size and importance in the region or the nation that it's in. It can be based on the types of inhabitants of, this, of the settlement. Really, uh, there's a lot of places you can start off with for um, when it comes to a concept for a settlement. Mm -hmm. So let's see if anybody has a settlement concept and we can get some up and vote for our settlement concept. Little baby settlement seeds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and with such a wide variety of places to start, even more so than other, um, than other workshops in which we've sometimes already combined multiple ideas, a settlement is really one where we might be able to pull in pretty much everybody's ideas. So Potentially. Depending depends. depending on how coherent they are. Alright, so Risky's idea is mercenary land. Mercenary land. So like somebody and say that says we're so wanting a frontier, frontier type. type. So mercenary land being like a place that is a a gathering point for adventurers. Or maybe mercenaries in particular. Or mercenaries, yes. Oh, so Zathos is, is, is asking Frontier versus Well Settled as opposed to, and, and it says Crossroads. Yeah, Crossroads would be good for that. Mm-hmm. Anybody else got some concepts? Coastside. Coastside is a concept. So if we have a, a so a a crossroads housing a major trading point. All right. So it seems like a lot of these things um, fit together because honestly, if you're not on a coast. Or at least on a river. Yeah. It's hard to be a the, proper crossroads. the important crossroads yeah. of the area. Right? Like, you think in the real world of most of the big crossroads cities that built themselves up because they were on a crossroad, they had a river or they had um, they had a coast of some kind of sea or, or ocean as well. In so, addition to the roads that are crossing by. So this ma this makes it sound like this is definitely not going to be a small village at this point. So it's um, going to be like a town yeah, or a city. Yeah, it's probably, depending on how early into its development as a crossroads, some of those crossroads settlements just sort of like explode in population. Like in the United States, Chicago really mm -hmm. exploded in population over a very short period of time. But um, we could be looking at early in its d in a crossroad settlements um, development when it's a town. Uh, we could be looking at a city, even a metropolis. Uh, and as Atlas said, they all start small but then get big, and mm -hmm. that that's absolutely how it goes. And Risky said, "Let's see, we have a lot of things here. Uh, a road that leads into an underground city in the sea." A city on a bridge that connects land masses, so this could be like a um, in like islands in the in the harbor. 
Mm-hmm. That are then connected back. And we've got several other good, great examples of Atlanta, St. Louis, and even Billings, Montana as crossroads areas. Or St. Joseph, Missouri, where the trail to the west began. There's lots of good um, examples of crossroads yeah. because the, it's a it's a realistic settlement type that we can build off of our real world knowledge of crossroads settlements to learn more about. Well, I really do like this idea of of it having um, uh, of it having sort of a, a a part that's on the land and then and then satellites that are islands in the sea and that it also connects down into uh, an underground city of some type or an mm. underwater city of some type. So it's got like uh -huh. all these different branches that's that's coming together from that's coming together from what's happening in the comments here. Uh huh. All right. So let's go with that for our settlement uh, concept. So we've got our concept for the settlement. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at what we need for the settlement stat block. We're gonna need a name and a level. Uh, the the name we can figure out whatever. Yeah. Um, so let's let's talk a little bit about the settlement level. So the settlement level is going to tell us what level of sort of NPC and item are, if not super common, like a 10th level settlement doesn't have like everyone walking around at level 10, but mm -hmm. pretty common enough that you could find people of that level if you need to. You can find someone who not only is a level 10 wizard, but could cast their spells for you. Which is a lot higher bar than just saying, oh, well, this settlement, you know, it, it has a level 10 wizard who lives there. And there's mm -hmm. one, and she is not going to cast spells for just some rando who wants it. Because the demand would, even if she's willing to use all her spell slots for that, the demand would be such over the course of this whole settlement that you probably won't get your spells cast. So it's like what items you can find, what NPCs mm -hmm. you can find, what kind of magic you can find. So, um, if you look at the core rulebook, you can see that, um, in general, the way that this works is also, it's not exactly, it's, there's not a one-to-one -one mapping for, um, between population and level, but there mm -hmm. is a, um, there is a sort of suggestion of level ranges for that let me see if i can find it um in the core rulebook since i actually only have the game mastery guide with i can right also now. i can also grab the crb oh here we go so um villages are usually zero to one two to four for a town five to seven for a city um and metropolises or capital cities that aren't metropolises can go to eight eight to ten and mm -hmm. a metropolis could even if it's one of the largest cities in the world, or um, it could be above 10, like right in the 11 to 13 range. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can go to another plane to get some really ridiculous cities. Um, so let's see what level we're going to be looking at. So so those came through before you Yeah, gave those the... came through before I gave the, the roundup from the yeah. core rulebook. And we also need to know if it's a town right now and it's still building up or if it's already a mm -hmm. city or a metropolis. Yeah. Also, these are um, these are guidelines. Um, it's like, if you don't know the settlement's level, it's usually this. But you mm -hmm. can definitely have, like, a good example on Galarian of a very small settlement that probably has a very high level is there's that one, can't remember its name, it's in the land of the Lidarm Kings, and the population is almost entirely retired high-level Ulfen Guard mm -hmm. um, characters who just live there and worship Gorm there and whatever they do. And it probably has an enormously high level and is still probably a village or a town by yes. population. So, um... Sandpoint says, Ular, yeah, I could see Sandpoint. Sandpoint doesn't even have that high of a level um well it, i think i think sandpoint in uh sandpoint and anybody's ongoing campaign probably has a pretty high level because then they've got the retired pcs who all live there oh you mean just because the population is so small that four groups of retired pcs yes. <laughs> is already gonna drag it up but if you 
if you don't count have if you haven't run all the APs, then just having one mm -hmm. group of high level adventurers probably doesn't raise it. So people are talking about the let's see. So we say townish town, give it more round to go, and then some people are talking right. about the under the under the underwater city, perhaps being uh, underground slash underwater city, perhaps being larger. So it looks like we're looks like we're looking at that city to that city to town threshold. Okay. So that would put us at around five, I guess. The, so just the lowest city or the highest town before. So four yeah. five. So. Yeah, probably that. And if it has this underwater sister settlement, then let's let's actually put it five and say it's higher level than a town should mm -hmm. be because we know it's growing into a city soon. So this is like a, a really good town to go to. And it probably has, some people pick very high numbers, but it probably has some kind of special ability about getting items that are yeah. higher than its level because it's a crossroad. Uh, so... Special ability about uh, items higher than its level. All right, so awesome. And hey, if it was four, it would be the exact same level as Otari, the settle the town that's a mm -hmm. settlement. Um, that's an example in um, in the game mastery guide. Mm -hmm. um, whereas there's also the metropolis capital of the pirate. Uh, Port Peril that's level 11 because of the fact that pirates are pretty high level. Yes. Um, so it's above the normal metropolis lane, uh, range, but just barely. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, we've got level 5 though. Uh, Risky has a recommended name, uh, Salvos, a made up world I picked from Salvage. So there we go. That's a possible name. We also... Um, we're gonna wind up picking up traits, but we can we can find those traits as we go along. Mm -hmm. So the level is its relative size and economic capacity. We we figured that out. Um, we're gonna get its traits uh, based on what we decide in other um, sections. So let's decide the other section. Let's talk a little bit about its government. Mm -hmm. What system of government does? this settlement possibly named salvos have does it have uh, a mayor an, a, a town elder a ruling council some secret society that pulls the strings on a puppet leader a cabal a religious sect a thieves guild that's in charge all right we have a, a lot monster. of suggestions here we have right. a shark shasta trading port a constitutional monarchy an anarchy or a theocratic council uh -huh. Seems like everybody's going in a different direction here. That's right. Shark Shasta's secretly rule it from the A under council of captains. Council of captains. All right. So this actually has a lot of good ideas. A council, council of a guild council. A guild council because of the fact that it's a trading port. A council, one from above ground and one from One underground. from underground, one from the seas. Oh, I see. So underground is actually different from the the sea from the sea one here. Maybe I think that the person who kept saying underground multiple times, Lari Seven X Three, wants it to be underwater because of a later yeah. comment, but had said underground a few times. Yeah. Well, I can see but... it. I can see it as like maybe there are maybe part of the the settlement is that there are sort of sea caves that go that go underneath mm -hmm. as well. So you've got so you've got the the stuff that's out fully into the sea, and you've got the things that are sort of the this labyrinthine, uh, these labyrinthine, often flooded um, tunnels underneath the city where all sorts of things can happen. Mm-hmm. So all right, it looks like looks like things have like sort of gelled down into a bunch of. Um, a bunch of suggestions have started to include councils that are working together. So, question becomes whether or not it's a council of guilds or of captains or a council that is made up of people from each of the segments of the city. Uh, let's see. Looks like it's pretty, um, it's pretty split among the different kinds of councils. But mm -hmm. 
we could definitely have a situation where we bring in the shark Shasas and the secret council in charge underwater by saying that whether however the council is distributed some of the underwater people who are on the council or the one if we do one and one and one um are um secretly under the thumb of um the influence of a shark shasa i guess they don't may not have thumbs but <laughs> uh backwards fin thumbs backwards there you go and the leshies <laughs> <laughs> Well, you could totally have, like, seaweed leshies mm -hmm. as some of the creatures that live here. So, um... So it sounds like we've got some kind of yeah, a deal Are we going doing on. something where it's, um... There's a combo suggestion, which was, um... You've got sort of the heads of each guild, like Kovlar. Mm -hmm. Um, but then also you've got these sort of, um... Like the aquatic and terrestrial chancellor people who are elected maybe from the guild heads or maybe not to be like the number one person um, in certain matters mm -hmm. for that part of the settlement. Yeah. So, it, so I mean, maybe that this is something that, um, I mean, it's a town and it's burgeoning and it's growing. So maybe this is something where the... Oh, so Rico is confused. This is a crossroads settlement that is also at a crossroads, not only on land, but also with the ocean and has an underwater sort of sister settlement that's connected and that they run their affairs together with each other. Mm hmm I like the idea of a, a council that includes the heads of guilds as well as some other uh, important people in the city. All right. And it could be something that's been evolving over time because the city is, or rather, because the town is growing so fast and is on the verge of becoming a city. And they're trying, and they, and they, maybe they started with, uh, maybe they started with a, with a more simple governmental structure and then they realized, like, oh, yeah, you can't necessarily just do that. Because the population is burgeoning, you can't just have one mayor anymore. Mm hmm. So it's a ruling council. All right. Shark Shasta tactics says risky. Wake up with the head of a bluefin tuna in your bed. So, what kind of legal codes do they have in the settlement? Is it just kind of pretty normal things we would expect? Um, where you don't like murder and steal and those kind of things? Does it have mm. some weird convoluted laws? Does it is it pretty chaotic and just be like like the river kingdoms in Pathfinder where it's like courts are for kings and you have what you hold. Ular says maybe the mercantile codes of fair trade are the only laws. Something disproportionately focused on salvage rights from shipwrecks. Well, especially if we have, like, the various mercenaries that are trying to go out there and do stuff. That's right. Have... I forgot that there's yeah. a lot of different mercenary groups. Mercantile codes of fair trade and laws that keep mercenaries from encroaching on each other's turf. Parentheses, particularly salvage rights. Assault Rouch. has charges depending on where you're hit. Highly detailed chart. Got yeah, super pricey. Risky suggest. And then also likes the salvage. I think, yeah, salvage rights yeah. being convoluted makes sense. Um, what kind of law enforcement do they even have? So their town, that's big enough that they usually have some guard system where the villages just kind of police themselves. Mm -hmm. Rico says that some of the laws in the surface and underwater are probably a little different. Risky would say it's harsh for theft because of the merchants based on what you stole and how you did it and what you broke into. Uh... So presumably they probably have some kind of guards or do they use the mercenaries 
It's guards. Whiskey says overpaid guards. They could also have a, it could also be a combination where they have the official overpaid guards, but sometimes when people aren't happy with uh, with things, they might turn to the mercenary. Dark Swordsman says a group of former pirates <laughs> turned into a security force. So that could be overpaid former pirates. Joe Junger says guessing the underwater city isn't directly downstream from the town sewer runoff. <laughs> yes. Presumably not. Overpaid. So overpaid guard force that includes former pirates. What about the organizations, churches, and other factions that are in this settlement? That are not non-government organizations. Well, we know we've got a Shark Shasa who's scheming. Yep. But, um... But that's not... That, that's does one the Shark Shasa have its own faction, though? Or is it just one single scheming Shark Shasa? Well, if the Shark Shasa has influence in the we, government, then the Shark Shasa does We know that, that there are merchant guilds. Right, yeah. they have influence in the government, but they are they're they're powerful merchant guilds and they're powerful mercenary groups. A church of Besmara. Yeah, Lari says a big a big church of Besmara. Assuming this is this is on Golarian, and if it's not, then you can put in your own equivalent. Mm -hmm. And Ular says maybe Kalazandri, the um, the evil um, elemental lord of water. Well, the question is, and Ular said that fits with the Shark Shasa, but the question is, is the Shark Shasa openly in control? Is it a secret? Mm -hmm. what, um, and as we're thinking of these organizations, I figured that we can circle back to alignment when we're done with this. Risky says maybe a temple of a rastal with a head of a seahorse. Uh, we can possibly circle back to the settlement's alignment, which is mm -hmm. going to be chosen as... Um, the alignment of the settlement's government and overall society. And while it may indicate a trend, it doesn't dictate the alignment of every individual citizen. And uh, let's see. So. It looks like we're talking, people have been talking about a lot of different religious groups that could exist. With the guild presence, guessing it has some lawful elements, says Joe. Mm-hmm. Well, certainly some of these laws are rather convoluted. Laurie says Abadar. For a growing mm -hmm. settlement mm -hmm. with a lot of trade, Abadar could make sense too. So what, let's pay, as we're thinking about what, what uh, organizations are influential, let's peg the alignment of the settlement. Yeah, because you can still have all of these churches in the settlement but what yep. the oh but the overarching settlements alignment is probably going to say a lot about which one is going to be most influential ular says lawful neutral overall Lari says lawful evil overall joe says is avatar the god of trade in golarian well trade is definitely part of his his mm -hmm. deal uh, as is uh just generally cities and civilization mm-hmm um, Risky says lawful neutral. And also Merfolk Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Upper world lawful neutral, underground lawful evil. All right. So, it looks like most people have picked Lawful Neutral overall, but that definitely doesn't mean there can't be, like, mm -hmm. this secret Lawful Evil Shark Shasta yeah. faction that actually has a huge amount of control underwater. It just probably means that not all of their people under there are, like, Sahuigan or other Lawful Evil creatures, but more like Merfolk or more neutral creatures that are being manipulated and controlled by the yeah. Shasta. Yeah, so I, I like that then, because that, that gets across all these ideas. So Lawful Neutral Fort Town, but we do have the, but we do have the um, underwater Shark Shasta faction in the faction list. All right, and we 
we need to put in if there are other traits that the um, settlement has. So it may. It's really interesting to have a Besmaran temple in like a lawful place. Too. Yeah, because it's so chaotic. Yes. <laughs> um. So, do you think that that maybe the settlement has the amphibious trait? I think it does. It's a little cutesy, but it could because of the fact that it has both underwater and above pirates all right so we figured that much out and we Blair know says bismarck's temple could be more of a token concession to attract sailors or <laughs> or some of the pirates who were who became their um their guard force hold on we need to acknowledge risky's plan words here uh Bismara temple and avatar temple the civilians ship them uh-huh <laughs> So, um, we know the government now about the council. Um, we should try to figure out the population breakdown of the town. So, let's see. So, is that talking about um, what different ancestries are common there and which ones... Let's look are we, at are we looking more at what is ranges. our overall population and then breaking it down? Um, it's both. We want to look at what the population of the settlement is, and then also we want to, uh, from there, figure out what we're going to do about... Mm -hmm. um, about which which portions of the population are what mm -hmm. so so this is the uh this is the first edition uh settlement chart is that still a population chart is that still something to use in second um well we didn't exactly talk about those numbers here in the game mastery guide although it may be in the core rule book And we have the the town trait, for example, and the metropolis trait in the back of the game mastery guide. Mm -hmm. But I'm not seeing the population level tables in the game mastery guide, so we can just use these for now, and we can yeah, change it later. Sounds good. So, so this is a um, big town that's on the verge of becoming a city. So it's going to have thousands of people in it. Yeah, so they're probably looking at around 5,000. Yep. Probably in the 4,000s, somewhere going up mm -hmm. to 5,000. Uh, let's do 4,500 people. All right. And, uh, and what kind of ancestries do we have here? And is this the combination of all of the people in both halves of the city? Um, it probably is. Yes, it is. So we definitely are going to have gonna have humans if this is any kind of Golarian similar setting, which we pick deities that makes it yeah. sound like it is. So we have humans. Um we're definitely gonna have merfolk that people kept mentioning. We have merfolk. And um, like we don't need to call out the one shark shasa unless there's actually a lot of shark shasas in there. Mm -hmm. Um we We have a there there's people people have chatted a lot when yes. you scroll up. Um uh, let's see. So, what have we got uh, here? We have a mention of Sahugan, dwarves, halfling, marrow. Humans, dwarves, halflings, the merfolk, marrow, Sahugan, goblins. Goblins. And then Grindy, Grindylow. Grindylow. Possibly some horrific underwater creatures. Lokatha. Like the Lokatha. Deep Ones. I feel like Deep Ones don't get along with anybody. Yeah. The scene, deep Ones seem to be in a different... Um, this That's kind of coming from a different underwater settlement than what we've got going on here. Yeah, I feel like that Deep Ones are not going to mm -hmm. work together with other creatures. So we're, we're looking also at um, what are the most common... Ancestries. Rico says they just don't get along with me. Mm hmm Maybe. I don't know. I feel like Deep Ones are a little bit like... 
their whole thing is that they're co-mingling um, secretly with other species, and it's, it's a little squicky. So maybe they just don't get along with me. Yeah. Um, all right. So we've got some Lokata and Merfolk. Um, what are those Seria, Toyedinoi? We could possibly have those. Oh gosh. Um, Pathfinder. Let's play. Can we, um, can we, can, can we figure their name out closely enough that Google can even figure out what we're talking about? It's Seria Teoidoi. Seria Teoidoi. Teoidoi. Oh, I, put, I couldn't people. spell it even close to well enough. I just put anglerfish people. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, it's uh, Sarah Teoidi. Sarah Teoidi, the anglerfish so people. So impossible to pronounce. It makes Algulfu look like Sarah they're easy to pronounce. Sarah Teoidi. All right. Rex the look was like, what did I just join in on? Uh, We're coming up with what kind of ancestries are in this um, settlement that's partially above ground and partially below ground. Please zap that one. What? Um, I, I would say please do watch your language in the um, in the chat. I forget how to do moderation. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, anyway, mm -hmm. um, wait, I can try mod view, but it says click to learn more. What is that doing? Something happened. It appeared in a different way. It appeared in a different way. I'll very Oh, but I don't have any of the previous chats now, so it's pointless. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, that... Now it's giving us all the instructions. It's giving yeah. us 10 instructions about what to do. And I didn't read them, so I now don't know how to do it. All right. Well, we'll, we'll, okay, we'll, take, cool. we'll take a look at that for the uh, for the replay. Okay. Um, yep. I mean, the replay doesn't show. Or no, it maybe does. it does show the chat. Okay. It does show the chat. Anyway. Right. Um, so I think yeah. we have a good list of, um, of ancestries. Uh, we can make our percentage-wise. So... Um, percentage wise, how much of the city is underwater versus above ground? Because that is going to help us figure uh, out about, let's like... See. We have humans, merfolk, locatha, ceratoidoi, and we probably have some secretive suwagin, or suhugin. Are they really secretive, though? They're, like, they, they're probably pretty obvious. But do you mean, like, just that there are some there, and... Well, there's some there, but they're probably not, like, a large percentage of the population. I could see them being some of the enforcers for the, uh... The shark shasa. Shark shasa. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. So other we have, we have dwarves and we have and halflings other. as well. Was mentioned. All right, so we can just have other be other. Yeah. And we know that that has so again. So hooligans. All right. You know. Laurie is saying a large portion. Spatial wise is underwater, but much of most of the population is above Rex water. Rex the liquid wants there to be leshies. So do I. All right. <laughs> there are leshies. So there can be seaweed leshies. Coral leshy. Oh. <laughs> but is that a valid form of leshy? I feel like they are. They're not. They're, they're, right? they, yeah, they're not. They're not actually. Yeah. Fine, so, so you can't have a coral leshy. Okay. Um, uh, it's not, but yes. you, you could have, um, seaweed leshies, mm -hmm. for example. Yeah, they are. They're cnidarians. Mm-hmm. I well, just checked to make sure. Maybe, maybe they're leshies that like to live among coral. That's, that's possible too. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so, <laughs> so we can put in some percentages on this, but, uh, we probably have a lot of humans, a good number of merfolk. 
and then some less seasoned dwarves and some of the other ones. All right. So, at this point, um, oh, and Ular says also some elves. All right, so we've got our population breakdown more or less. We can put some percentages later. What are mm -hmm. the languages commonly spoken in the settlement? Probably common in Aquin. Yeah, I would say common in Aquin, likely. Since we don't have a lot of Ulat, Kini, and um, Abeleth, and those kind of Algolothlu, Algolothlu is probably not one of the common yes. languages. Uh, we've got our religions when we talked about the churches. Mm -hmm. So, what are the major threats facing this settlement? Because the Sharksasa is not really a threat to the settlement. The Sharksasa is, is secretly running some of the underwater part of the settlement. Uh, examples from the Game Master Guide are like drought, famine, political uprising, criminal activity. So, um... So, we've got kidnapping as a possibility for a big threat. Mm -hmm. uh, the shark shasta itself. Is it a threat, though, or is it just is it controlling the, <laughs> climate the change. area? Climate change. Because, um, like, uh, drowning is an example of one for, for the land people, I suppose. Uh, the pH of the water Because, like, is changing. the Sharkshasa absolutely could also be a threat to the settlement. Yeah. But if it's just secretly ruling part of it, it probably is okay with the so settlement. So, we have piracy. Um, Non-union pirates. Yes. <laughs> pirates that are not part of the... Random their... geyser outbreaks. Flotsam and Jetsam just sort of coming in and smashing stuff up. Clashes between the churches of Abadar and Pesvara. Magical spells of weird magic stuff. And Killer Zero said sort of like the equivalent of oil spells. But yeah, magical, magical uh, sort of like some kind of runoff of magical energy. Uh, Zathos says the Algol Thulu could be a threat because they're angry that they're not in control of this underwater thing. Or they don't like all these deities that are worshipping in there. Uh... A goblin cult of Zagwagat tried to establish a church by stealing junk from Abadarans and Vesmarans, resulting in said feud of them blaming each other. Sea Linorm. Cult of Zagwagat. Sea Linorm. Chul attacks. Treacherous the... reefs. Sea Linorm. Chul attacks. Treacherous reefs. A big sea monster. That could be the seedling arm. Uh, a sea monster. Treacherous reefs, not treacherous reefs. Ah, it's hard to type all this stuff. All right. <laughs> that sounds like plenty. That's maybe even too many threats. <laughs> uh, but let's see. D does it have any other distinctive features? Gelatin is cube invasion. Well, we talked about the distinctive <laughs> features of the underwater part. I think that's already pretty distinctive. Uh, let's see, significant NPCs. So we know there's the Shark Shasa, um, which is a much higher level creature than the settlement level. That's okay. You absolutely, the significant NPCs could be much higher level than that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's secretly <laughs> controlling the underwater part. Cuban invasions once a year. The Great Wobbling. Great Wobbling. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other major NPCs? Um, and we'll just sort of... Uh, Captains of Commerce is a title. Sort of come up with very quick information about them. Uh, yeah, well, for... Captains of Commerce is a, yep. it was like a good title for some of the, um, the people who are in charge of the, the Mercantile Guild. That's right. Like, for instance, in, um, in Port Peril, we have the uh, Merchant Master and Joint Overseer, the Accountant and Joint Overseer, the Hurricane Queen of the Shackles, and the Harbor Master and Joint Overseer, which is sort of a group of four important people. Uh, the Sea Guard of the Police Force. So, like, the leader of those uh, 
sort of, quote, tamed pirates for the police force. Who may be named uh, Captain Silkbeard, Dwarven Pirateer, or that may be someone else. Uh, Captain Silkbeard? Oh, I see, yes, that's awesome. A merfolk with electric eels on leashes. <laughs> so I think just being that... Oh, that's that's the underwater guards because the pirates would be on land. All right, those would not be one of the important NPCs, but that could be part of the underwater guard force. Uh, uh, who has the under... What is the merfolk with electric eels on leashes? So... Let's see. If we have the Sharkshasa that's secretly doing things, um, with, we probably want the NPCs who are the sort of like um, Chancellor for Land and Chancellor for Underwater on this list because even though the Chancellor for Underwater is under the Sharkshasa's control, they would still be visibly one of the, one of the most important people on the council. Uh, so, so there's an Asilla mystic, fortune-telling, blessings, listening to the ancient ways, etc. So, Asilla, Asilla mystic would be kind of um, the Elminster of this setting, since uh, they're level 16, which is so much higher than the Sharkshaza, who's actually controlling the settlement, yeah. that Asilla could just eat. The Sharkshaza. Uh, if, if we're talking about them being a an NPC who's around, mm -hmm. they could they could easily rule the entire place. Yeah, so um, they seem a little a we, little powerful. If for we the still want to have multiple somethings like Asilla does, we could use something lower level like um, what do you call them? The octopus <sighs> people. Uh, I know exactly what you're talking about from Song of the Sea Witch. Yes, and many other places. Uh, uh, it's on the top of my Cicalia. So Cicalia, yes. So we could have a Cicalia mystic, um, for example, which wouldn't be quite as outsizedly leveled as, as a Scylla would for the area. Yeah. Um, with all the same sort of things that they are doing. <laughs> Level 15 Sicalia witch named Cursula. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, but then they're already level 15. Yeah. So, maybe not quite that high level. Um, Alright. And then, so we probably need those those two chancellors, but maybe um, maybe one of the people that we already said. Well, no, I guess we haven't really said that many. Like the dwarven privateer is not going to be the on land uh, chancellor. Mm -hmm. Uh, is the uh was the was he the leader of the of the sea guard or was that the uh or I was think that, that was supposed to be a separate person. Yeah. Uh, that was is that the merfolk with electric eels on leashes? Those are the underwater. Uh, those were the underwater component because having the pirates do it, only they would not be yeah. able to go into the underwater section. So maybe so maybe those two are the the leaders of the guard, the sea based guard and the land based guard. Mm -hmm. And so that would cover both of those. So then we need a land chancellor and a sea chancellor. So Risky says that the sea chancellor who's under the control of the Sharkshasa is a Malenti, which is a type of Sahuigan that mm -hmm. looks like a sea elf. All right, so we have a Malenti. Uh, so the Malenti chancellor... And then this is the one who is sort of under the thumb of the, uh, or the backwards fifth thumb of our, of our Shakshasa. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, and then we would have a, a land chancellor. Land chancellor, an undine, or a gilbin investigator? A monkey goblet? 
So probably the land chancellor. It's probably from a, a probably from land a, based is, ancestry. It's probably from a land based ancestry yes. that is populous in the city. Mm -hmm. Just because of the fact that if the city is, if the land part of the city is like 60% humans, it's more much more likely to be um, to be a human. Yeah. I mean, which could be a human undine, yeah. because an undine is a her versatile, or would be a versatile heritage. And we have, so it could be an undine, or another tradition we have here is a half elf. That's another kind of human that it could be. Uh, and we, we said there are a good number of dwarves here, too, mm -hmm. so like it could be a dwarf. Uh, so it could be, uh, people are, are liking a half elf, so mm -hmm. let's go with half elf. So human who is a half elf. Yep. And they said investigator. So the, the land chancellor is mm -hmm. a is a half elf investigator. Half elf investigator. Probably was voted in as chancellor by all the guilds after like successfully bringing back a lot of their missing stuff and mm -hmm. solving a lot of crimes, and they just like this investigator who seemed to deal fairly with a lot of different guilds and seemed to be unbiased and just in their favor. So got voted in as the as the overall chancellor and that's how you wind up getting a detective as your leader which is kind of cool i don't know of a lot of settlements where their leader is a detective uh so nice okay um we've got a lot of npcs not, yeah here. that's plenty that's more than we need but mm -hmm. uh we have the ones we now do have the ones that we do need yeah um let's see so settlement abilities first of all we should have something in there about um the fact that it's a crossroads, meaning that uh, that was, it's so a like movie. ones yeah. like City of Artisans that are in there, are just like you can just get the items up to higher level if they mm -hmm. if it's the thing that they're famous for. Since it's a crossroads, though, instead of saying you can just get items that are up to four levels higher, um, that are of one type that they mil build, like yes. City of Artisans, uh, we could we could be like this is a crossroads, so. You um you can get any type of item up to four levels higher, but you have to do a thing because it's on a crossroads and things are constantly flowing back and forth, so it's less constant. If that makes sense. So you can get any type of item up to four levels higher, but need to search for it slash do a mission. Well, if you do a mission and yeah. or are higher level, it can be you can get but things anyway, more yeah. anyway. But like yeah, you would have to probably have to. Search for it or possibly wait as things are moving back and forth all the way. Yeah. Um, and then it should probably have a settlement ability based on the uh, the, the two halves of the settlement yeah. being connected. Um, Is that like, the what does amphibious mean for a settlement? It could be. In which case, if it should be in the abilities, it should not be the amphibious trait in the traits. But, uh, mm -hmm. like, let's see. Um... Maybe it's easier to find, um, like, magic that helps you breathe or move underwater or in the air if you already are an underwater creature in the settlement than its settlement level would assume. So, like, you could even get higher level water breathings than the settlement seems like it could provide. Easier to find water breathing magic and items that help. Moving in the water or air for the water people. Air. Yeah. Yeah. And we also have a suggestion of another thing here: some famous goblin taverns run by goblin run by a goblin cleric of Caden Kalins being something that might be a, a feature in this town. That's cool. Yeah. I don't think there's actually a place for it in the settlement stat block, but that would possibly be. Um, actually, that would be in organizations and factions if yeah. those goblin taverns taverns are connected and the mm -hmm. Church of Caden is sponsoring them. So we could have it there. All right. <laughs> Apparatus of the crab ride. Apparatus of the octopus is cheaper. That's <laughs> it's cheaper and better at moving around. It's just not quite as good at beating things up. Electric eel petting zoo. That sounds unsafe. <laughs> mm -hmm. Totally safe, guy. All right. So I think we've got um, yeah. all the aspects of the settlement here. So um, way to go, everybody. Mm -hmm. How do you? What do you guys think about Salvos as the name of this place? Yeah. Are people cool with Salvos as the name? That's right. The last thing is, 
We only had one suggestion for the name. Salvas is pretty good. Um, Joe says, it's shocking. That's true. <laughs> but that's about the electric eel petting zoo. It's... Or electric L petting zoo. Sea bunny petting zoo. Sea bunny petting zoo. Also unsafe. <laughs> All right. So let's go with Salvos. What is a sea bunny? Oh, it's a sea slug. Yep. It, it has little kind of like ears. a bunny. Aw, that's cute. All right. Maybe Except electric. Except they're extremely Maybe toxic. electric eels that curl up into an L shape are electric L's. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yay. All right. Okay. We got so, um, I think we've got the settlement. So let's say goodbye to YouTube and then mm -hmm. figure out how the poll is going. So, bye, YouTube. See you next time. Bye.